Anatomy of the Heart The heart is a complex, fascinating organ that is essential to life. This very powerful muscular organ, located in the center of the thorax, between the two lungs, is truly the engine of life. It is practically indefatigable and circulates the blood throughout the body, at every moment, non-stop. The left side of the heart pumps oxygen-rich arterial blood that comes directly from the lungs. It sends oxygenated blood throughout the body through the main artery, called the aorta. Arterial blood feeds each of our organs with oxygen, allowing their proper functioning. The right side of the heart ensures the circulation of the used blood, which is collected by the veins. The venous blood returns to the lungs, where carbon dioxide, CO2, will be removed, and it is replenished with oxygen to nourish the body once again. The left and right parts of the heart are separated by a wall of muscle, and each part contains two cavities. The interior of the heart, therefore, has four cavities called chambers. The two upper chambers are the atria. They collect blood passively, which is then sent to the respective lower chambers. These latter, called ventricles, are larger and more muscular, and they pump the blood out of the heart. The left atrium collects blood from the lungs, and the left ventricle propels it toward the aorta. The right atrium collects blood from the veins, and the right ventricle pushes it toward the lungs. The left ventricle is cone-shaped. The right ventricle wraps around the front portion of its neighbor. It looks like a crescent if viewed from above. The perpetual movement of the contraction of the ventricles could cause friction. For example, if we rub our hands together, it produces heat, and over time, there would be inflammation. However, this is not the case, as in order to avoid friction, the heart is bathed in a lubricating liquid inside a watertight pouch called the pericardium. The heart is a muscle. It is also called the myocardium. The chambers of the heart and the large vessels attach to a fibrous skeleton, in other words, a rigid structure. The heart skeleton consists of four fibrous rings, or tendinous circles. The heart is encircled by the two largest rings, the atria and right and left ventricles attached to it. These two rings are also the point of attachment for the two auriculoventricular valves. The large vessels of the heart are the aorta, which brings the oxygenated blood to the body, and the pulmonary artery, which sends the used blood to the lungs. The fibrous base of these large vessels begins on the other two tendinous rings to which the tricuspid valves are attached. A pump for life. The heart has four valves that ensure blood circulation in the right direction, with no reverse flow. The two heart valves are the pulmonary valve and the aortic valve. They are located at the base of the large vessels at the exit of the ventricles. They are tricuspid valves. In other words, they consist of three cusps attached on the ring. They separate the right ventricle pulmonary artery from the right ventricle and the aorta from the left ventricle, respectively. The cusps are extremely flexible pouches that fold back against their ring when the ventricles eject blood. Following ejection, the blood column tries to flow backward due to the decrease in pressure and the suction effect created by the ventricle relaxation. This attempt to return causes the cusps to reopen, blocking the blood and making the valve tight. The two auriculoventricular valves separate the ventricles from the atria. These valves are situated on the rings and are composed of leaflets, cords, and muscular columns located in the ventricles. On the right side is the tricuspid valve, and on the left side is the mitral valve, which has two leaflets. The mitral valve is easily comparable to boat sails. The leaflets are attached to the fibrous ring of the heart skeleton, while the free edges have ropes attached to the ventricle's muscular columns. This configuration allows these valves to be leak-proof, preventing the return of blood to the atria. When the ventricles contract, the pressure generated by the muscle pushes the heart's contents upwards, thus closing the leaflets. The leaflets are held up by the cords, which prevent them from folding back into the atria. 
Thus, the only way for the blood to exit is through the pulmonary valve on the right and the aortic valve on the left. The heart has its own fascinating electrical system to synchronize its contraction effectively. The conductor of this electrical system is located at the top of the heart in the right atrium. It is a group of cells called the sinoatrial node, which is, in fact, the heart's natural pacemaker. It initiates all heartbeats and determines heart rate. Transmission between the atria and the ventricles is possible only in one place. It is another group of cells, known as an auriculoventricular node, which plays the role of electrical customs officer. It lets electricity out of the atria and determines the maximum heart rate in normal condition. Once electricity has passed through the auriculoventricular node, it is transmitted to the right and left ventricles through two branches, two specialized electrical wires, in other words, rapid conduction. This electrical transmission that takes place in the ventricles allows the heart to contract from bottom to top and to drive blood toward the pulmonary and aortic valves. To ensure oxygenation of the heart muscle, the heart has two coronary arteries, the left and the right. The coronary arteries branch out to surround the heart along its entire outer surface, and their purpose is to vascularize the heart muscle. They originate at the beginning of the aorta. They then divide into multiple branches that will penetrate the muscle in order to irrigate the entire heart. Go to iCardio.ca to discover a wealth of information about heart health.